All right, hey everybody, it's the Rideshare Reseller Mike here. I'm uh, gonna give you a little bit of update where I uh, stand on the last three months. Uh, from this date back three months, it seems like eBay only lets you kind of do that. If somebody knows how to do the yearly totals, I'd uh, you know accurately, I'd, I'd appreciate any help with that. Anyhow, I'm gonna go over the three months and then I'm gonna go over some items that I sold and then at the end of the video, I'm going to show another photograph of mine that I've taken over the years and just give you a little explanation of how I uh, how I took that. And of course, I'm flying the uh, Jimmy Garoppolo uh, 49er jersey. Had a you know rough three years, and they finally are starting to produce and play a lot better. And I just wanted to uh, um, say hello to the Commonwealth picker. He's a he's a good guy. Kevin's a good guy. We had a little bet. He's a big Ram fan, and uh, well, I got the best of him on this bet. And we'll see how he uh, how he handles that. He's a he's a good guy. So anyhow, um, uh, been busy. Uh, I played a lot of golf uh, this summer. I played uh, some more. We just finished our annual tournament, which culm culm culminates in the uh, uh, the gross and net champions of our club. And it's been a while, but um, I finally won my gross championship again. I got the trophy here. It's a little. It's a pretty big size. It's not not light. Anyhow, um, I had my name on this trophy once before in 2011, so it's been a dry spell for me, um, and I've been hearing about it. So I uh, finally got that this year. Um, I uh, love to play the game of golf. I love to play competition. It's a uh, it's kind of my relaxation. Um, I get a little frustrated with the game, I think, as everybody else does, but I enjoy playing it. I've played it since I was a kid. And uh, uh, it's a great way to build camaraderie and uh, all that. It's kind of my social media besides this, but also um, my social media outside gets me outside, gets me to play some golf. So anyhow, let us get going here. Let's get in here to start off the three-month total. Let me get this up. I'm going to try and make this bigger and move me over. Give me a second here. All right, here we go. Anyhow, um, for the last three months, I've still been pacing about 10000 a month. Um, from July 22nd to October 19th, so that's the three-month window, 29608 so just under $30,000 for the three-month period. It shows 65% up since Tuesday, April 23rd through July 21st. So you can see, I obviously, I started in April of 2019 and have uh, continued to grow. I think I've hit, hit kind of hit a wall. Um, I don't know how much more you can squeeze out of it. Um, people ask that, how much can you grow? I mean, I probably can. Um, it's gonna be interesting to see if I can, but it's hard if you think about it. To get ten thousand a month is an average of about three hundred dollars a day in in sales. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know if that's great, good, or 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 not. People have to let me know. Um, anyhow, it's on pace right now for a hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year in eBay sales, and that's obviously gross, not net. Uh, I've been running about 25% cost of goods with shipping and everything through eBay. And that's pretty much sounds pretty much standard. So, you know, 25% of uh, of 30,000 is six, and then you know, what is that? Seven, eight thousand dollars in that range, somewhere in that range, I guess. So that's 20. Let's call it 20,000. 20,000, and then my cost of goods after that. And my cost of goods are not high. I am I have been really, really picky and have had some very good scores on some very inexpensive uh, purchases. So I've done pretty well on that. So anyhow, $29,608 in the last 90 days. So that's where I stand on that. All right, let's go ahead and get into some what's sold. 
All right. I'm gonna, these are going to be most recent, obviously. I, I just kind of picked the most recent. There's been quite a few. I haven't made as many videos. I've had you know, my granddaughter been busy with a lot of that stuff. It's just been, you know, uh, just in general, uh, a, a lot of stuff kind of going on that keeps me busy. You know, I still do the ride sharing and all that. So uh, I'll try to do more. I've got some plans down the next spring. So I'm going to be a little bit, you know, choppy through through the winter months. But from there, I hope to get better with it. All right, guys, first item up are I bought these Echo Men's Track 2 High, high Gore-Tex boots. And I'm pretty sure I paid uh, $10.99 for these uh, at a Goodwill. It was just recently. I mean, they sold within a week. And I did sell them for $129.95 plus $20 shipping. All right, next item up. This was an interesting one. Um... There's a funny story about this, but in, in, it, it, it's just in general about what this game is. This is the Cal Bears, the play between Stanford and um, and Cal. I was a kid. I went to every Stanford game. My um, my stepdad, he was a deputy sheriff, so he worked the games, and I got into free to all the games. So long story short, interesting. I played for eight years on the Golf Channel Amateur Tour, and um, the tour director for my area, his name was Mike Noble. The name just rang a bell with me. And long story short, Mike Noble was in on the play. And he went to Stanford. I put two and two together and figured it out. He never mentioned it to anybody on the tour until I figured it out. And we gave him a hard time because he was on Stanford. And he was on the field during the play. So this is a bobblehead that I found. Uh, I paid $5.99 for the bobblehead. And it sold really quickly. Uh, I took an offer. I had it up for $41 or $42. I sold it for $35.95 and $8 shipping. So look for these bobbleheads, um, you know, the unique ones. I, I didn't think this was going to be worth much. And I was very surprised that it sold. Because most bobbleheads sell for about $20. And uh, this one sold for $36 plus shipping. All right, all right. This was a good. This was a good one here. This is. I love these. These. I love these kind of buys. This was at the Goodwill. They had. They had. Um, lotted together six of these Fur Fighter eight refill sheets. Um, they were lotted together in six, and um, I paid four ninety nine. Four ninety nine for all six. And they are, I'm right at the price of $21.95. I sold my first one within like three days. So I have six of these that are going to sell for about $22 a piece. So that's like $130 for these. And I paid five once they're all sold. And I'll just keep an eye on them, make sure I'm the lowest price. But I love finding this stuff. So I'm really looking for this. My son-in-law, he's, he's looking for outdated uh, scrubbing bubbles, weird kind of stuff. That you can flip. I just I flipped some Zap cleaner for like fifty dollars. So there's plenty of this stuff out there. So keep looking for this stuff. And all right, here's uh my first. I think it's my first baseball glove I sold. I have one other one that hasn't sold quite yet, but this one was it was like brand new. I didn't know if this if they still made this one. It was hard to find because. Uh, all the ones were kind of used and, and made in Japan and made in USA. This was a Wilson A2000 XL dual hinge baseball glove. And it, this is how this works. It, you, can't, you can't make this up. I literally paid $6.99 for this glove. The next day at another Goodwill, I found the A2000 um, uh, XLL. And that one I paid $5.99 for. Uh, you just you can't believe it. So these gloves, some of these gloves are expensive. This one sold for $115 plus $15.95 for shipping. Another really good find. And it was like brand new. All right. Well, here's some more uh, class. That you just keep looking this stuff. It's just, you can't get, a, get, get away from ink. Um, was at a Savers and the cart came by and I was there and grabbed the 61 and I think a 64. This one sold right away for $40 and 475 
crazy thing is the ink was two ninety nine my cost, so I got two of those for two ninety nine. I'm gonna make eighty bucks off my six dollar purchase there, plus the buyer paid four seventy five shipping. All right, here's here's something that I don't see a lot of because I'm in a very dry climate. This is a Davis Air Dryer 500 electric warm air dryer for boat, RV, or home. I think this does, the dry 500 means it does 500 square feet of room. So I, I believe it was four to six dollars to, to pay for this. It was just, it's brand new. It's like brand new. It was at Savers, I think the day I bought the ink. And uh, they showed some pretty good comps and it sold for $40 right away. So that's all for 40 bucks, something that I don't see around here because we don't have a lot of moisture in our air. And uh, yeah, another interesting find. This one I found at the Goodwill for $6.99, I believe is what it was, minus my 10%, so about $6.39. This is a baby heart monitor, fetal Doppler. It was used, but it was in, in perfect shape. Again, it sold right away for thirty-four ninety-five, um, really quick, and uh, I like those. You know, boom and gone. Next item, I've been on the hunt for uh, for golf clubs now. Um, I wasn't looking for them originally so much, and then I, I started to run into a pretty good streak of them. And and most of the golf clubs that you find at, at the Goodwill around here. They sell for anywhere from $349 to about $399. They don't really put a, a value on many of them. I look for the wedges and the putters. And I found this Odyssey and actually at my annual tournament, which wasn't part of my gross championship. It was just part of the tournament, the la end of year tournament. I putted with it before and I was thinking about keeping it. But then I found out that night it sold. So it shipped off. And it's no great loss, but I'll find another one. All right. This was, this was absolutely, you, you guys, if you watched my one video, you saw me get these. I got two of these that were wrapped in tape from a Goodwill for eleven ninety five. Two of them. Now this one I put up and I started getting offers. I, I got an $80 offer, $109 offer, and I knew that I was going to be able to, to sell this, so I just had to be patient. I got full asking, $169.95 with $12.95 shipping. I haven't put the other one up. I'm going to make sure that everything is cool with this one before I put the other one up, but I imagine I'm still going to get $169.95 out of that one. And as a Bose... 901 series active equalizer they don't make them anymore so if somebody has the 901 series speakers and they need this uh they're kind of they have to pay up a little bit because that's the going price for these i was surprised this one took a little while for me to sell it was very interesting these are uh dog uh, boots and they're made by uh trex and you put them on your dog's feet in the snow. Again, I don't get a lot of snow here, so I don't know all of you know all of that stuff. How these end up here, but they were brand new in the box. It, it sat around for a while. I had a couple offers, but I, I kind of stood pat. I only paid like four bucks out of Goodwill, so I just kind of sat on them for a while till I got the right buyer, and eventually I did. So those probably hung around for a couple months. All right, up next. Um, this was another one that hung around for a little while. It was brand new. Canon Sure Shot 85mm zoom, 35mm uh, camera. This thing was brand new in the box. And I just, some people would offer me 25, 27. I said no. And I ended up getting full price of $44.95 plus $8 shipping, $7.95 for the shipping. Had a roll of film, a little uh, pouch, everything. Very clean little unit. Again, many people pass up uh, the 35 millimeter cameras, but you know I don't. I I actively hunt these down. Oh, here's an, here's a really really you just can't imagine you could sell something for this for this price. All right, I was at a garage sale, uh, city garage sale, and this guy 
This lady had all kinds of vintage glass. I mean, brand new. Everything was in the box. I just did, do not like glass. And I looked at a few things on the glass side, and there was just no way I was going to store it and try to ship it. But she had it brand new. She just had never opened it. An item she had in the box was this new, new, it was new, but it's vintage MCM Revereware 1801 Whistling Tea Kettle. And I paid $10 for it. I know what I paid, 10 bucks. And these things sell for around $160. Took a while, but it sold for $159.95, a tea kettle. So you gotta look, it had the original pamphlet and the original tag on it and uh, a great find and a great sell. It took a little while, but I did sell it. All right, next up, oh, this, is, this is another good one. You just, you know, I'm in Silicon Valley, I tell you guys, you know, I mean, I find some of the most amazing items for the, the cheapest price. It's just crazy. I was in a, a Goodwill and uh, had some other picker friends who were in there. And I got in there just before them. And this item was in the bin that they had pushed out. $9.99. I know exactly what I paid for it. It's a Logitech MX Revolution 7 button wireless laser mouse. And I paid $10. And it sold within two days for $150 plus thirteen dollars shipping so again uh being in silicon valley people just seem to put this stuff toss this stuff away and i don't know why but nobody seems to want to look it up themselves and see if it's worth something but i'm looking for it all right this was another so it took a little while and i knew it would take a, a little bit i paid 25 dollars for this and it was a realistic reel-to-reel -reel tape deck. And uh, this thing was mint as far as the cosmetically it was mint. I got it to turn on. I couldn't get it to play. So I had to put it as um, not parts, but I just don't know if it works. It turns on. I have a feeling all that's wrong with it is the belts. And that's a common thing with older electronics. The belts break the belts get you know stretched whatever but i knew i could sell it because of its condition it was i'm talking like right out of the box i had to really take good care of it here to make sure that i didn't do anything to it and it sold for 180 dollars and 29.95 shipping but here's the good part about this there were two reels on the unit i didn't sell those to them i kept the reels and the reels are up, they sell for $50 each. So, you know, I've got another $100 off of this one by selling the reels. There was no need for me to give him the reels, you know, he, or the person, you know, let them let them buy the unit. They probably have their own reels. And the guy that bought it, you can tell by his uh, his name that he was a, an electronics guy. So he, he knows exactly what he's doing here as far as that goes. So I'm not afraid of any electronics that doesn't work. Uh, again, I've said it over and over. If it doesn't work, sometimes that's easier to sell because you're flat out saying it don't. I don't know if it works. As is. There you go. All right. Up next. <laughs> this is this is just kind of a funny one. New good. The new Goodwill by us opened up, and I happened to find uh, Billy Bass. I think he was seven ninety nine, and he was brand new in the box. Uh, Everybody's seen him. He talks. He, he sings, I think, um, uh, Down on the Bayou, I think, by Creedence Clearwater. Sold it for $37.95. Uh, the funny thing is, is I had it sold once to somebody over in Europe. And he kind of came back and said, hey, the shipping's too much. Because a lot of these people in Europe and overseas uh, aren't not understanding that there, we pay one shipping price to if they see free shipping sometimes they think it's free to them then they get confused especially if they're new newer to ebay and um so he had to cancel because the shipping was too much on his end from ebay to him i don't see that until it actually is sold out 
and then I can see that kind of what he paid and yeah, he didn't want to so he canceled I said no problem put it right back up and sold it pretty much instantly all right now here is something that I have been on the lookout for now too curling irons again brand new obviously I'm trying to find them brand new this one was $6.99 at a Goodwill Chi Air and when I looked it up uh, it was around $60 was the average price for this guy and I sold it pretty quickly for $55.95 so curling irons I found another one the other day I haven't made a video on it um, it's a little more fancy and it goes for anywhere from 120 to 150 it's a, a ceramic one also a little fancier so I have that up I think I have it up for 119 I put it on the lower end and it was brand new also and I didn't pay more than 10 bucks for that one too I right, got three more to go all right here's here's another one that I take chances on because I can't test them I have a, a really um, simple philosophy on car radios. If they're worth something and I can get them for cheap, then I'll take the chance to say send it, but I will offer completely free returns. If there's a problem, they can send it right back. So this one I paid $6.99 at Savers. I mean, you go through Savers, I'm surprised. There's, there, tonight I was there, there are four or five, but they're just not quite in the price range I want them to be in. And they were $6.99 to $9.99. This one I picked up because it has a bigger navigation screen and it was to a Skyon. And I had to hope, and I, I just think that some of these people take to get these cars and then they want to put a nicer system in. It's not that it breaks. How many radios break? Not a whole lot. So that's my theory on it. So I shipped it out, cross my fingers, and bang, lo and behold, positive feedback received. $80 on my $7 purchase. So I'm not afraid of these car radios. If you find them, guys, um, and they're worth some money, give it a shot. Just if it, something goes wrong, you just give them their money back. Now, here's one they paid up for. And I don't know if it was just a slow day or I wasn't feeling it. But I was in a Savers up north, a little further north than where I normally am. And they just put this out. And they put it behind their counter. And I looked at it, and they, I had a, you know, I, I, want, I had a 20 or 30 percent off. It was either senior day or 20 percent, so somewhere in there, I can't remember. I remember I got it down to 20 dollars, so 25 down, it was probably 30 percent. So I got it for 20, and it's the Northern Exposure, the Complete Series Gift Set Satchel. It's like a suede satchel in the whole DVD series. So I paid 20. And they were going from anywhere from, you know, roughly $80 to $100. So, um, I think I put it up for 100 and took 80 That was, a, you know, I paid up a little bit more, but I knew I was going to sell it for decent money. So, uh, and shipping was media mail, so that was not much. So, good flip. Turned my 20 into 80 A unique DVD set. All right, last one here. All right, here is some shoes. Again, um, my friend Charlie, who was, I, I call him the clothing and shoe expert for me. He's like about 25, 27 years old. Just a great kid, great guy. I call him a kid, but he's a great guy. He really is. And he helps me out with my shoes. And I have never found a pair of Rothy's. So if you people out there can find Rothy's, it's like picking up a $100 bill. Uh, you know they're just tremendous sellers and uh, I found these not in the shoe rack I was in a Goodwill and they happened to be on the bottom shelf of the stationery. and I was walking by and I looked down and they said those are Rothy's what are they why somebody had to pick them up and put them down so anyhow I grabbed them seven dollars ninety nine cents and uh, I sold them for ninety dollars and then 1995 shipping I think the shipping was only 10 so I sold these for basically a hundred because the shipping was only ten dollars so I got a hundred dollars out of Rothy's look for these Rothy's they are washable so if you find them and they've got a little dirty in it little dirty you can wash them I guess there's all they're very popular with women so uh, look for Rothy's
All right, guys, that's going to end that portion there. And now I'm going to call up a photograph of mine and give you that. Let me, all right, let me see if I can get this up. All right, here we go. Right, this is, I'm going to, I'm going to quickly go full screen on this just so you can see it a little better. There you go. All right. This is the Space Needle in Seattle. And we happened to be there in the fog in the morning. We were on a boat out in the harbor and I happened to flip around. And just as I flipped around, the Space Needle poked its head through the clouds and there it was. And, uh, this one here I've actually sold, and it's a uh, it's very interesting when it's it's mounted. It looks very cool. Um, I a lot of get a lot of compliments on this particular uh, particular one. It's uh, a good photo. It's, it just happens to be where I was at the right spot at the right time. Turned around, had my camera, and then took that photo. So I do a little bit of landscape. I do street work. All that kind of stuff and uh, that is called I call it solitude space needle Seattle and it's a pretty cool little photo all right guys well I just uh, wanted to give you kind of an update hopefully you can find a couple things in there that pique your interest and uh, thanks for watching and I will see you next time